Hi, it's Natalie Double here. Now, if you're looking to expand your self-growth, then you are at the right place. Now, try to remember yourself 20 years ago, or 10 years ago, or even last year. Are you a completely different person than you used to be? And what parts of you have changed? You know, what parts have remained the same? Now, aging is a natural thing and an unstoppable destiny, but the key is that we continue to grow and mature and evolve as we age. Now, it's totally normal that we tend to focus the majority of our attention on the external world, the material things, the things that we're trying to obtain, and our relationships with other people. But the truth is, the development of self into the person we want to be is actually the most important thing that we can put our energy and attention towards. Now, once we achieve a real connection to our authentic self and realize our true purpose, all the external achievements will follow anyway. So to continue learning from your past and improving your future self, try these five easy steps. So step number one is to reflect on your past. So when I ask you to look at your past self, what did you see? I mean, can you trace the steps that got you from there to where you are right now? I mean, we all have pivotal transformational moments in our past. We come to a fork in the road and made a decision that affected everything since then. So some should be pretty obvious. The schools that we attend, the city that we chose to live in, the beginning and ending of important relationships, starting a family or finding a new job. Now, identifying these moments in your past is a great way to look at how far you've come and to identify where you want to be in the future. Okay, now step number two is to connect the dots. So once you're able to identify the big moments, begin to break it down a little bit further. Now those big decisions are usually the peak of several smaller moments. So for example, getting married is an enormous event, but it doesn't just happen. If you were to look back at the moments leading up to that decision, consider why that person made it past the point where many others did not. You know, was it a few big things or just a whole bunch of little things? Now, as you fill in the gaps, you'll begin to learn a lot about how you make decisions and what your values are. So you might also notice a pattern that emerges based off significant past events in your life that have played a major role in shaping the person that you are today. All right, so step number three is to do a self-inquiry check. So what do you like most about your life right now? And what do you like the least? Now, is there something that you would like to change? Is there something that you hope to shift in your life? You know, is the change going to be big or is it going to be small? Now, self-inquiry is about taking your life a layer deeper. It is about getting curious as to why you do what you do and making change where possible and continuing to do so for all of your days. So some paths that you can take to self-inquiry include things like journaling. You know, when you're sitting down and just writing thoughts that are coming through. This is especially great if you do it after meditating, which is another way to do that. You know, you can go into a meditation asking a specific question before you go into the meditation, see what comes through, and then when you come out, just sit down and start journaling. Now, when you journal, I do recommend that you actually have a physical journal, that you use pen and paper, um, that when you're writing, uh, filling out your journal, because you'll be amazed at how when you're just doing that writing with your hand, how things are able to be channeled and come through you. So it's a really insightful way to be able to journal. Um, you could observe your thoughts and habits and patterns. And again, this is something you can do and commit to your journal. Thinking about, you know, why do I think this way? Where, where is this happen coming from? Um, you know, when you keep asking the questions and getting curious, we're not just looking at the symptoms because your thoughts, habits and patterns are the symptoms, but what's underneath it? And why did that happen? And why do you think this? And why am I triggered? And all of these different things. And when you can keep asking those questions, and then journal about them, you'll be amazed at the answers that come through for you. Um, you could use an app on your phone to track you know, various uh, tendencies and behaviors and things that you have as well. Um, being aware of how you feel in any given moment. So let's say, for example, you, know, you have an app, a practice of gratitude, you're doing things every day that make you feel good, you're moving positively towards your goals, but then something will happen and then a, a not so positive uh, emotion will come up for you. So when you're aware of how you're feeling in that moment, it's a great time to stop and go, okay, 
Why am I feeling this and where is this coming from? Uh, being aware of what you eat uh, is really important as well, you know, because we, we've got to be putting the right fuel into our bodies to make sure that we have the energy and the vitality and the health to be able to, you know, move forward, create these goals and get to where it is that we want to be. Okay, so step number four is to inspire. So now that you've become aware of where you need to make changes, you need to inspire yourself to make them. Now, inspiration can come in many different forms. Um, things like, you know, doing something that you love. Um, if you've got really supportive friends around you, people that you know that you can trust, that are part of your inner circle. Um, if a trained coach, I mean, I always have a coach. I know that I coach thousands of people, but I always make sure that I have a coach myself so that I'm always becoming the best version of who I am so that I can be the best coach that I can be. You could join like a like-minded group, whether that's a program online or a meetup group, um, and really make sure that you immerse yourself with people who have a like mind to you that can really help you with some inspiration. Um, you could join new classes online, uh, read books, uh, listen to podcasts, you know, use oracle cards, watch films or documentaries, you know, or you know, any kind of writing or blogs or anything from people who have been on a similar path to you. So as you experience self-inquiry, you'll be on the lookout for inspiration everywhere, every day. Now it could come from the most expected places as you intentionally envelop yourself with inspirational people and inspirational practices. Or it could come from the most unexpected places. You know, the message in your foam on your coffee or the whisper of the wind, um, or coming to you through uh, meditation, or the intuitive hit that, that hits your gut when you hear a new song, or you know, last night's dream. The goal is to surround yourself with inspiring people and ideas. And during this step, there are still no actual changes that need to be made unless you feel incredibly inspired and simply can't help yourself. <laughs> step number five is to take action. The fifth piece of continuing your self-growth journey is to implement your changes that you have learned. You are now putting to action your intentions for personal growth. This is embodying everything that you're learning. Your self-improvement imaginings become a reality here as you apply everything that you've learned about yourself and making some meaningful shifts. So did you decide that you'll be happiest in a new city? Then make the move. Did you realize that it's time to release that old grudge? Well, write that forgiveness letter. You know, did you decide that you want to you know, love your body as it is? Well, then start saying affirmations in the mirror daily and start today. Whatever you have chosen to do, remember that this self-improvement journey is lifelong and full of various milestones. Some changes will take weeks, some will take years, and some will always be a work in progress. So during this fifth step of the personal growth checklist, the goal is to finally make your desired shifts happen. So during this step, there are actual changes that need to be made. And last but not least, meaningful personal growth and success is a never ending process. So you've got to enjoy the journey, every single step of it. If you have any great examples of how you've learned about yourself while helping others reach their goals, please share it with our community in the comment box below. I would love to hear about it. Now again, my name is Natalie Ledwell. Thank you for watching and bye for now.